Hi everybody, welcome back to Chapter 9. Companies that use FIFO, average cost, or any other method besides LIFO or retail inventory method to report inventory use the lower of cost or net realizable value approach. To do this, a company compares the inventory's cost to the inventory's net realizable value. Net realizable value is the estimated selling price of the inventory in the ordinary course of business, reduced by reasonably predictable costs of completion, disposal, and transportation, such as sales commissions and shipping costs. Another way to think about net realizable value is that it's the net amount the company expects to realize or collecting cash from the sale of inventory. After comparing cost and net realizable value, a company reports inventory at the lower of the two amounts. If net realizable value is lower than cost, we need an adjusting entry to reduce inventory from its already recorded purchase cost to the lower net realizable value. Net realizable value then becomes the new carrying value of the inventory reported in the balance sheet. If cost is lower than the net realizable value, no adjusting entry is necessary because inventory has already been recorded at cost at the time it was purchased, and this cost is lower than the total net realizable value at the end of the period. The lower of cost or net realizable value approach avoids reporting inventory at an amount greater than the cash it can provide to the company. Reporting inventories this way causes income to be reduced in the period when the value of inventory declines below its cost rather than in the period when the goods are ultimately sold. For financial reporting purposes, lower of cost or net realizable value can be applied to a. individual inventory items, b. to major categories of inventory, or c. to the entire inventory. The example here demonstrates the lower of cost or net realizable value approach with each of the three possible applications. The Collins Company has five inventory items on hand at the end of the year. The year-end cost determined by applying the FIFO cost method and the net realizable value current selling price less costs of completion, disposal, and transportation for each item is presented. Items A and B are a collection of similar items. Items C, D, and E are another collection of similar items. Each collection can be considered a category of inventory. If we first consider lower of cost or net realizable value by individual items, we see that the cost is lower than net realizable value for items A and E. These inventory items were initially recorded at cost at the time of purchase. So that under the lower of cost or net realizable value approach, they are currently recorded at their proper amounts. No adjustment is needed. However, for items B, C, and D, we see that lower of cost or net re realizable value is the net realizable value. Therefore, we need to adjust the carrying value of these items downward and report them at net realizable value in the balance sheet. After determining the lower of cost or net realizable value for each individual item, the total amount to report for inventory is $395,000.
Now let's see what happens if we apply lower of cost or net realizable value approach by inventory category. The first category of inventory, items A and B, has a combined cost of $150,000 and a combined net realizable value of $175,000. So we report this second group of inventory at its cost of $150,000. The second category, items C, D, and E, the combined net realizable value is $256,000 and is lower than the combined cost of $265,000. So we report this second inventory group at its net realizable value of 256,000. We report inventory at 406,000 under this method, 150,000 plus 256,000. Finally, if we apply the lower of cost or net realizable value approach, by total inventory, we see that the inventory's total cost is 415000 and is lower than its total net realizable value of 431000 The inventory then would be reported at its cost of 415000 As shown in the illustration, applying lower of cost or net realizable value two groups of inventory items will cause a higher inventory valuation than if applied on an item-by-item -item basis. The reason is that the group application permits increases in the net realizable value of some items to be offset by decreases in others. Each approach is acceptable but should be applied consistently from one period to another. When net realizable value is below cost, companies are required to write down inventory to the lower net realizable value. These write downs usually are included in cost of goods sold because they are a natural consequence of holding inventory and therefore part of the inventory's cost. However, when a write-down is substantial and unusual, the write-down should be recorded in a loss account instead. That loss must be expressly disclosed. This could be accomplished with a disclosure note alone or by also reporting the loss in a separate line of the income statement, usually among operating expenses. Here is a concept check problem for you. Please pause your video to consider the following problem. When you have completed the, your calculation, please start the video again to check your answer. The following information pertains to one item of inventory of Forge Company. The cost per unit is $270. Replacement cost is $225. Selling price is $292. And costs to sell are $52. Applying the lower of cost or net realizable value rule, this item should be valued at... Please do your calculations, then check your work. The cost is $270. If we compare that to the net realizable value of $240, you can easily see that the inventory should be valued at the $240 net realizable value. And of course, the net realizable value is its selling price of $292 less the $52 cost to sell. Well, that's all for this video. 
In the next video, we'll discuss the lower of cost or market approach.